on behalf of the people of Uganda, the government, the NRM, as well as on behalf of my family and myself, I extend my heartfelt condolences to the family of Mr. Mukasa, the stepfather of the late Nebanda, and to the people of Tareja on the, on the death of the late Honorable Nebanda. When Honorable Kasue Rumumba rang me at around 21 hours, which is 9 p.m., on the night of Friday, 14th December, and told me that Honorable ne Nebanda had died, I could not easily believe this because I, I had seen her only the day before when I addressed Parliament. Nevertheless, as fighters, we long ago acquired the discipline and culture of not panicking in the face of adversity. I told Lumumba to ring me again as soon as she got to the hospital, which she did soon after. By that time, a number of people had gathered at the hospital including the stepfather of the Honorable Nebanda, Mr. Mukasa. When Honorable Rumumba rang me the second time from the hospital, apart from talking to Mr. Mukasa, I insisted that I must speak to one of the doctors who works at that health unit so that they tell me which person or persons had brought the Honorable Nebanda to that place, to, to the hospital. The hospital, I think, is called Mukwaya, Mukwaya Hospital. Of the people that had brought Honorable Nebanda to that hospital, two had run away, when the doctors told them that Honorable Nebanda was dead. However, one of the team that brought Honorable Nebanda to the hospital, the clinical officer from the first clinic they had sought, they had sought help from, was still around. In that panic, nobody had concentrated on him. I requested the doctor to locate him for me so that I talk to him. The clinical officer could not speak English fluently. I therefore asked him what vernacular he was con conversant with. He said that he spoke Luganda. I told him to switch to Luganda. To, to Luganda. He was then able to give me the story of how their clinic had been contacted by the two friends of Honorable Nebanda when the latter needed medical help, of how he had been invited, he, the clinic officer, had been invited to the house where Nebanda was with her friends, of how they had tried to give her what they were calling first aid, etc., etc. This was a breakthrough in the investigations to discover what had killed Nevanda. There was somebody to show us the house where the problems of Nevanda had started. By that time, Lieutenant General Kari Kaihura had arrived at the scene. I told him to concentrate on that clinical officer so that we discover the truth. The police moved swiftly, identified the house in the Munyonyobuziga area 
where Nevanda had been, broke into the house and started the investigations. Within 36 hours, the names of the principal actors in that tragedy had been identified. The records of all these persons are with the police. According to all the human sources, the people who were involved, and also according to the electronic sources, such as telephones, ETC, it became very clear to the police and to myself as to what could have been the cause of death of the Honorable Nevanda. What remained were the post-mortem reports and the laboratory reports on toxicology, whether it was poison or drugs. Drugs meaning uh, narcotic drugs. The post-mortem was done at Mulago, and the results showed Nebanda had not died from natural causes, such as heart attack or clot, ETC. She had been killed by some substance or substances which she had taken that affected the pancreas and the lungs. What then was or where this or these substances? That was the question now. Were they poisons or narcotic drugs? Pieces of, of Nevanda's organs, called samples in police and medical language, were removed for analysis. In order to be absolutely sure, the officers in charge of government analytical laboratory, abbreviated as GAL, G -A -L, decided, and the government supported them, to use an external laboratory in the UK, which apparently they normally work with on such issues. On my orders, a second laboratory in Israel was also identified. The results from the UK laboratory came in ye yesterday but one. Came in yesterday but one. They were harmonized by our, our pathologists with the post-mortem report. Then the Director General of the Medical Services, Dr. Jane Achen, supported by one of the pathologists that was available, issued the final report using the UK laboratory results and the post-mortem results. The ones of Israel have not come in because they were sent later. The results show that only of Nevada died from taking drugs. They are all listed and the family we are given a copy yesterday. The drugs which killed Nebanda we are all listed and they were they, they, they were given the family were given a copy. Uh, later on I will they are, they are here I will uh, refer to them. These drugs could have been taken voluntarily or accidentally. According to some of the human sources, it seemed that it could have been accidental ingestion. Accidental ingestion. Ingestion is the, is the English word for taking something, taking or swallowing. It could have been 
This is according to some human sources, which the police have. However, one factor is uncontestable. One factor is clear. Nobody can contest this. The Honorable Nebanda, either no injury or a no injury, was in the wrong company of either drug sellers or drug users. There is no doubt about that. I have known this from the very first day when the police went in, but we kept quiet until the laboratory test came in yesterday but one. Even Karunji, the so-called boyfriend of the late Nebanda, will be arrested wherever he goes. Incidentally, the police have made more arrests. The police have made arrests of those drug dealers. They are with the police now. The associates of Kalunji who ran away, but he will also be arrested. I have nothing but contempt. Contempt. I have nothing but contempt for those who have been peddling the line that the National Research Movement government could have had a hand in the death of the Honorable Nebanda. Right from 1971, when our movement was formed to fight Idi Amin, we only killed and only kill armed enemies in combat. Yes, the NRM has killed people, and we have also been killed, but we only kill armed people in combat. Armed enemies in combat. These are the ones we kill. So anybody who says we kill an armed people is an idiot. He's an idiot. He's a fool. He's despisable. And they will know what it means to fight the national resistance movement. Even armed enemies, when they surrender, we give them total protection and handle them according to the law. Why kill Nebanda? for just being a chicken and being manipulated by some of the crooks. Some of these poor young members of parliament are being manipulated by crooks. And we shall come to terms with those crooks. These poor young people like, like Nebanda and some of the other young people, they are being manipulated by crooks. Why kill such poor, poor children like Nevanda? I have actually been trying to rescue these children, these young people. I normally work politically and ideologically on the rebellious cadres in order to bring them in line with the NRM principles. There are many examples of the rebellious cadres that are now big leaders in government who were previously rebellious and doing this, doing that. We talk to them and, and convince them and they come to our side. Those who don't come to our side, they go and, and continue. Like BCJ, like uh, all those, they, they were our cadres, but when they didn't agree with us, they went. 
and uh, did their own things. And the ones who agreed with us came back. Namayanja there. She was a rebel. That Namayanja, this big minister of you are a big minister of what now? Of Ruero. Ah. That, that girl was a rebel. In fact, she was not even a rebel. She was actually on the other side. Because these neighbors are NRM, uh, we are NRM rebels. But Namayanja was, you, you, what do you call the other group? You, UYD? Yes, she was UYD. She was going around with Simogere, insulting me all over the place. Uh -huh. I, fished, I, fished her, I fished her out. My first meeting with Namayanja, we met in uh, Nakasongora. I'd take her to Nakasongora to. I don't know who had brought her to me. Uh, I think it was Katsugazi. Yes, yes. There was an intelligence officer called Katsugazi. He's the one who fished that one day. That one is a rebel. <laughs> Not a rebel. She was actually an opponent on the other side. Uh, I brought her to my side by talking to her. This is how I work with critics. Who doesn't know this? Which idiot does not know this? In Uganda. That we kill critics, people are just criticizing. How about people who are shooting at us? Whom we defeat and then we, we work with. Just somebody talking, kill, kill, kill him or her for what? And who have we killed? Why kill Nevanda and not kill any other vocal critics who are in parliament and elsewhere in the country and yet who are free citizens? Some of these have been more vocal and more disruptive critics than poor Nebanda. What I regret is that I had not yet had time to interact with Honorable Nebanda personally, except when I invited a group of them to my home in Tungamo, and in, in her cheeky way, she requested me for something which we immediately worked on. Be aware of those who say that a government can kill its own citizens extrajudicially. If you hear leaders who are talking that language, that a government can kill civilians or anybody outside the law, that means that's what they would do if they were in power. That means that's what they would do if they were in power. That's what they would do. Because I, can't, I cannot even think about it. So why, why, why do they think and talk like that? That means that's what they would do if they had power. Fortunately, they don't have power and they will never get it. Because we are going to isolate them and expose them. That means that is what they would do if they were in power. The NRM under my leadership has never done that, has never done that and will never do it. May I conclude by alerting all parents? It's a pity when I hear this talk about the, the poor girl Nebanda who died in these unfortunate circumstances. These fellows are here talking. They seem not to be talking to parents, to parents. Nebanda was a young girl. 
So I look at her as a parent, not as a politician, not as a uh, honorable and all these big titles, excellency. I just look at her as a, a young girl who has missed out on life because of some unfortunate, unfortunate circumstances she found herself in. May I conclude by alerting all the parents. All parents of the age of 50 years and less are fit to be my sons and daughters. If you are 50 years or less, you are fit to be my son or my daughter. Their children, like Nevanda, would be like my grandchildren. Parents, please monitor the company of your children. Parents, please monitor the company of your children. There are a lot of dangers awaiting teenagers and adolescents outside there. Do not take the attitude of Europeans that once a child is 18 years old, he or she is old enough to manage his or her affairs alone. Yes, such children are able to try to manage their affairs. However, there is no harm if the parents are retained as consultants. Why should we have advisors and consultants for the government and for the businesses and not have consultants for the teenagers and for the adolescents? By teenagers and adolescents, I'm talking about children who are between 15 years old and 30 years old. The consultants for the children are the parents. Teenagers, adolescents, be careful with your lifestyle. Be careful of the associates you link up with. Avoid alcohol of any type. It has no value addition to your life. Avoid indisciplined relationships. Lead a purpose-driven life. Purpose-driven means you study, finish your studies, get a job or start a business, and start a family with a vetted partner. The Banyankore proverb says, Washwera taburze, afataburze. Which means that one who bumps into a marriage without checking on his partner will die without warning. May Honorable Nebanda's soul rest in eternal peace.